Neil from Gnostic Informant. Thank you so much, Neil. Do you think Orphic Mysteries had any influence on Christian theology? Why or why not? Well, <laughs> so the first thing, again, this comes back to how do you compare things? And your first question in comparison, I don't think methodologically should be, did A influence B? That is, my purpose in comparing something is not primarily to find a genetic relation, right? Um, my purpose in comparison, is to, in, in comparison is to generate knowledge and to see what similarities and differences there are between two systems of thought or two rights or... Uh, to practices or whatever that it is that you're comparing. So this isn't the question that I would start off with. The way I would start this, Neil, is I would just start with the Orphic Mysteries and I'd learn as much as I could. And then I'd try to learn as much as I could about ancient Christian theology. And then I'd look at both the similarities and the differences. The fact is no one stands up and says, you know, no Christian stands up and says, I got this from an Orphic poem. And that's just not what the ancients do. Um, we do know that the Jews, probably in Alexandria, had written a testament of Orpheus in which they presented Orpheus as a monotheist. So in that case, the direction is going the other way. Jews are trying to influence Orphic religion and trying to make Orpheus into a monotheist, which is a very, very common apologetic technique. <laughs> um, Orpheus, you know, and the Orphic poems are definitely, whatever they are, they're not monotheists, and neither really is Judaism or Christianity in the ancient world. So I think we have to say that, again, we don't really know, uh, but definitely you could, you could hypothesize and say that well, for instance, um, we know that in Orphism, in the gold tablets, which were put into the mouths or on the chests of the dead, there were directions for where you were supposed to go in, in Hades or the underworld. And as it turns out, in several Christian texts, there are directions for talking to archons, or angelic rulers and in Hades and asking them essentially where to go in the afterlife. So a friend of mine has written an article on that and said, I think the similarities are close enough to propose a genetic relation. Nobody stands up and says that, they, that the Christians got this that no early Christian says that they got this from an Orphic text, but it sounds so similar you know, where the Orphic text says, when you get to such and such a location, two guys will ask you, who are you? Where are you from? And you'll answer, I am a son of earth and starry heaven. And then a Christian text like the Apocalypse of James says, when you get to the second heaven or whatever it is, you will be asked by the Archon of Venus, who are you? Where are you from? And you will say, I am a son of God that's pretty similar. And I'm just paraphrasing here. And then, yeah, then it's up to up for grabs, whether you want to say that that's an actual influence. Mm. Remember that everything is entangled here at this point, you know, so it's sort of like asking the question, did McDonald's influence KFC or did KFC influence <laughs> McDonald's? You know, I mean, their advertising strategies are all pretty similar because they're entangled. And they're learning from each other at the same time, right? So potentially what we have to imagine is that Orphics are borrowing from Christians and Christians are borrowing from Orphics at the very same time. It's not a one-way street. Yep. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe to Gnostic Informant. I really appreciate that. You have now attained true gnosis. Uh, Jason. <laughs>